My name is Tom Phillips, and I manage the global merchandise programs here at GroundSpeak. Um, and just to get started, I think uh, for anybody who doesn't know what geocaching is, geocaching is a high-tech treasure hunting game that's played around the world um, by about five million people and growing every day. Um, and they all use GPS-enabled devices to go play this game. And probably the easiest way to sort of describe the game is to tell you about how it got started. Um, back in May 2000, um, the government made the decision to turn off selective availability for GPS technology, making it very accurate for the general public. Um, and there was a gentleman by the name of Dave Ulmer down in Oregon, uh, and he thought, hmm, what's a way to engage people with this new technology? So he took a very simple idea. He took a little container and filled it with some items that you could trade um, and hit it out in the woods. Um, didn't bury it, just hit it out in the woods um, outside Beaver Creek, Oregon, and shared the coordinates uh, over the web and just challenged people to go find it and was curious to see if anybody would. Uh, he put a little log book in it, so if anybody found it, they'd write their name and share a little bit about their experience. And amazingly enough, people started finding it. People started writing their notes. People started getting inspired to hide their own container somewhere out in the woods. So by September of that same year of 2000, 75 people now had hidden containers. Um, and that's when Groundspeak sort of came to life. Some of the early fans of this game uh, are our founders, so Jeremy and Elias and, and Brian. Um, as they started to experience this game, they really got excited and sort of realized that if this game was going to grow, it really needed a home. Uh, it needed a place to build a connected community where people could create these adventures, share them, challenge other people to go find these things, um, and really track their adventures around the world. So that is what geocaching.com was designed to do. It was designed to engage and connect and build this community. Uh, and now, like I said, over 5 million people around the world, every continent, uh, they've hidden over 1.2 million things. And this community gives them the tools to play the game, create new adventures, and as long as you have a device that somehow is connected to GPS and also to pulling data, um, it's available to you. So it's free and open and very exciting. And the more opportunity people have to discover that they have GPS and how to use it, wider this activity grows. Um, as the game has, has evolved, I think the, the simple tools that people once needed were they needed a website that they could go to to figure out what was hidden out in the world. Then somehow they needed to get the data from that website onto a dedicated GPS device, like a handheld mobile GPS device. Uh, and so they go through these steps and load the device and then go out in the world and try to find things. Now as technology has evolved and GPS has made its way into devices they already own. Um, suddenly with a smartphone, they can just turn it on. They can um, ask the phone if there's anything hidden around them, and very quickly they can be off on an adventure. They don't have to run back to the desktop. They don't have to pick up another device. They just use the one that they've already got in their pocket. So as smartphones came along and now are really starting to evolve and change the game, it's making what is just such an exciting opportunity for people just to treasure hunt, um, available as soon as they turn that phone on and step out the door. Around two years ago, we started with the iPhone platform uh, in its very infant stage. A uh, lot of challenges. We built an API for, for the usage. The iPhone made it extremely difficult to program, but it was a challenge of its own. Uh, the application grew with a lot of user feedback and is now quite matured in terms of the capabilities it offers. When Android launched, uh, we again tried, the, tried to port our iPhone app, soon realized it's not going to work, and then uh, sort of rebuild the Android app in Java from scratch. And uh, it's again going through iterations, and uh, then soon came Windows Phone 7. Uh, we debated a lot, should we go for 653 or to go for Windows 7? Because you know Windows 7 adoption, it won't be for another year till most people have Windows Phone 7. Uh, in the end, we decided to go for Windows Phone 7 platform instead of 653. 
as it offered you know, superior design capabilities, programming capabilities, and it's, it was just a better platform to work against. So here's our iPhone app. Uh, it's got a ton of functionality that's been built up over um, many years development, over one year anyway. Uh, constant community feedback, feature by feature. Uh, you can get a list of geocaches, and you can see that the, you know, we've got a back, we've got a main menu button here, you know, it's kind of a typical um, iPhone layout uh, tabs for our different areas. And uh, it does pretty well, and people like it. So, uh, some of the things that kept us from making a direct port of this were, you know, no home button, no uh, menu button, no, you know, the navigation scheme was completely different. So um, instead of kind of fighting that, we embraced it and we took advantage of things like the Pano, uh, which is just nice, uh, you know, it gives a real rich uh, experience in navigation. Um, you can see we've got a, a map of where we are and you click that to get the nearby caches. So this is typically what a, a user is going to do, is go out and look for uh, caches around where we are, where, where the user currently is. And um, they find one they like, they have some info that shows up in that list and they go get the details for it. They go find it and then they can, they can log their find. Uh, with this app we also allow them to upload uh, an image with their log and get it from the camera roller, the camera. Uh, they can log trackables if the cache has a trackable in it. And it's basically, um, one of the challenges actually in making this, this app was that we couldn't start out with a real simple bare bones app like we could with the, the iPhone in the beginning because we already had these existing apps. And so we had to kind of come up to parity really quickly. And um, it's, you know, I think, I think we ended up there in the end. Uh, in fact, in, in some places we were able to do, uh, like take advantage of the, uh, the Bing Maps um, services for getting directions and routing uh, on our maps. And so we were able to actually kind of pull ahead in a couple of areas. So this is, uh, you know, kind of by the books navigation uh, with the user using the back button. Uh, it took a little bit to get our heads around that, but once we did, you know, we were able to kind of uh, work within that very easily. It's actually, it makes a lot of sense if you just start thinking that way. So um, this is the user's profile page. We have different levels of user too. Uh, that's important to know. It's one of our challenges. So our users have an account on our website uh, geocaching.com and that there are different levels of accounts. There's the basic member and a premium member mostly. There's a charter member as well but those are pretty rare now. Uh, the premium members have access to some features that the basic members don't. So from the phone and the service that the phone uses, we kind of have to know uh, when they log in like what to provide them in the UI, but not have such a drastically different UI that we have to chase down these two code paths. So things like the Pano and uh, the Pivot Display made it easy to kind of like, well, yeah, just show this, just show this if they, you know, if they need to look at their pocket queries, uh, which is a premium feature, or, you know, just leave that part out, and the UI still had a nice flow, and it didn't interrupt any of the um, navigation stack. Uh, 